Hi everybody, it's Dr. May. I'm here to talk about the stress tolerance skills today again, and today's topic is thinking of consequences and pros and cons. So let's get started. Pull up the screen so you can follow along with me. Okay, here it is. I'll make it bigger for us. Oh, there we go. All right, sometimes it takes a, a minute. Okay, so the stress tolerance skills are used when you're overwhelmed with emotion, when you have strong urges to engage in target behaviors, or you're otherwise just really struggling, okay? So the stress tolerance skills are what you do when you know you can't make things better right away, but you wanna get through the situation safely, okay? So one of the things that we could do is to use what the DBT calls pros and cons, but I'm gonna also add on to that thinking of consequences, because both of them are related. And uh, thinking of consequences is maybe a little bit more simple. Uh, pros and cons is a little more complex, and both have their uses, and it depends on the situation which will work better for you. So we're gonna give you some options, okay? Because sometimes when you're really overwhelmed, it's hard to think very clearly. It's hard to like go through all the pros and cons and kind of like make lists and stuff like that. So in a pinch, thinking of consequences is a little bit faster, okay? So we're gonna start there, because that might be where you're at. You might be really overwhelmed right now, and thinking of consequences is gonna be the best and most effective thing you can do, okay? Sometimes it's just even one thing that is enough just to hold you back. You know, sometimes it's hard to care about a consequence, or you can't even think about why you wouldn't wanna act out because it feels so appealing in the moment. But if you could dig deep, and remember that maybe one thing that really is important to you, then that's where you could have your power, okay? So I'm just gonna review a few of the things that people typically think about when they're thinking about consequences. So put yourself in the position of thinking about your behavior today, if there's something that you're struggling with, if there's an urge you have, okay? And as you're thinking about that and thinking about doing it, okay, Think about if you were to go through with it, how would it impact your relationships? Okay, so for example, how would the staff react? Or if you told a friend or a family member or somebody important to you that you cared about, your therapist maybe, how would that person respond to you? Would they be disappointed? Would they be mad? Would they be happy for you? You know, what would be their actual reaction? And is that a reaction you want to deal with? Um, would you be pulled into a big team meeting where you have to confront everybody and they're going to say, well, what'd you do that for? You know, that might be something you want to avoid too. It may be really uncomfortable and kind of embarrassing, right? So you want to think about how what are people going to see me? How do I want them to see me? Um, do I want people to see me as the kind of person that's, you know, always hurting myself? Um, you know, that could be some of the stuff that kind of comes into play, okay? So next, privileges and discharge. Okay, if you engage in this behavior, it might hold you back from getting the privileges that you're really hoping for. As good as the behavior might feel in the moment, it might delay you getting a green card or you being able to walk the grounds or take a trip or even go to the rehab, right? So that might be something you're hoping to avoid, especially if you wanna to go to the better programs in the rehab, maybe they're more appealing to you or interesting. Um, that could be something to think about. Um, if you're working toward discharge, you know, they want to see that you have a clean record, that you're in control, that you're managing your behaviors well, that you're making good choices, that you're skillful. So hurting yourself could get in the way of discharge, okay? So you got to think of the big picture, right? What's, what do I really want beyond just right now, beyond today, okay? So we're going to widen that lens and think about all these things. The next one is, although it may not be a factor for you right this minute, um, if you keep hurting yourself or that becomes a habit, is that gonna interfere with any goals you have for school? Maybe getting your GED, maybe finishing up high school or college. Um, is it gonna be hard to, to study and to concentrate and to get along well if you're in crisis all the time? You know, and managing these crises are gonna help you get through school better. Or if you have a job or wanna start a job, you know, you're gonna do, um, better for yourself and for the people you work with if you're able to stay in control, okay? So practicing now 
is gonna help you have more success down the road. Because each time you avoid the behavior, each time you use a skill, you're building a new habit. You're kind of making it stronger in you and giving yourself more confidence that you could do it again when you're actually in those situations. Okay, next thing is the, how are you gonna feel about yourself? Um, once the crisis is over and you're thinking back about what you did, are you gonna just be ashamed or feel bad about yourself or feel guilty or feel like, oh man, what did I do? I, I did it again. You're gonna have some regrets perhaps, you know, and then you have to deal with, besides the behavior and whatever that does to you, just the feelings that come afterwards, you know? So in addition to the feelings that are driving your urge to do the behavior, you're then gonna compound it with feelings you have after the behavior, okay? So super important to remember that, okay? And another thing is perhaps you've been doing a little bit better. Maybe you've been making progress. Maybe you've had some good diary cards. You've had some successes, you know, and maybe you felt good about that. And if you ruin it now, you know, you're going to feel a little bit bad that you, you wrecked it, right? So you want to keep building on your progress and you might feel proud of yourself if you're able to have another success of overcoming another urge and getting through another situation. Okay, and that's what builds resilience, getting through the tough times and bouncing back from them. Even if it's not right away, it could be a little clumsy, but if we can get through it, that's still progress, okay? So all these are super important, but you might have your own. I'm sure I didn't cover everything, you know, but there might be that one thing that really means a lot to you, okay? And that's the consequence that needs to mean something to you, even when you're in crisis, okay? And to kind of, you could even share it with somebody, share it with a staff member you trust or a therapist, and maybe that person can help remind you of it when you're really stuck in that moment. And when you're in a dark place, they can help pull you back out by reminding you of that thing that's super important to you, okay? So if you can't do it yourself, share it with someone when you're calm, and then they can bring it up for you when you really need it, okay? Or write it down on a piece of paper and have the paper with you if you're allowed to have it, okay? So different ways to get to it. Okay, so, in the traditional DBT sense, they didn't really talk about think of consequences. That was my addition. Okay, they talk more about pros and cons. So as you probably could tell from our discussion that thinking of consequences does kind of incorporate pros and cons. You're thinking about, you know, what are some of the problems that could come later if I engage in this behavior or how would I feel good if I didn't do the behavior. But the actual pros and cons list is a little bit more complete. And sometimes if you're really, um, struggling with a bigger decision, um, you might want to make a list because it helps to clear it out for you when, you when you see it on paper and you see it in black and white. Sometimes it just gives you a little bit more clarity. Um, but it's also important to know that it's not the number of things, it's the significance of the things. Like you have, might have a lot more pros for doing your behavior, your target behavior, but one really significant con that's enough to stop you, okay? So it's uh, quality, not quantity, so to speak, okay? Um, and also here, it's important to think of the long-term and the short-term pros and cons. So not just what's gonna feel good now and be the best decision for right this second, but also what's gonna make you feel good tomorrow, next week, a year from now, down the road, okay? What's part of the bigger picture that's gonna help you, okay? And this is also, of course, involving your wise mind, because your wise mind isn't just emotional, it's thinking things through in a more rational way. And there's nothing that's much more rational than making a list of pros and cons, okay? Um, and this is also something that you could do with somebody. You could do it by yourself if you want to, but you could also make your list with somebody, a therapist or a friend, or write your list and share it and see if someone could give you input, because sometimes that helps to clarify things as well. So it doesn't just have to be you in your head, okay? So whatever works for you, is what you should do. All right, so here's um, a chart that you could use. It's very simple to make. You can do it in a notebook or on a piece of paper, okay? And what's interesting about this chart is it goes a little further than just the usual, the usual thinking of consequences, right? So on the left-hand column, it says destructive or dangerous behavior. So you could fill in the blank of whatever that happens to mean for you, okay? And I'm sure you might have more than one and that's okay. Um, but it's whatever you're struggling with. So after you use the stop skill and you stand back from the urge and you're kind of pausing and thinking about it, 
this is the thing you could think about, okay? And with the thinking of consequences, we're usually focusing on, well, what's the cons of doing that behavior? And that's kind of what we just talked about with thinking of consequences. A lot of these have to do with the consequences later that might make you feel bad. But interestingly, if you look at the pros, you might also want to identify out of fairness, what feels good about this destructive behavior. You know, some people might find, for example, that it gives them uh, a way to take their mind off of something. It gives them a sense of relief. It helps them feel, whereas before they couldn't feel, or it helps them numb themselves out, whereas before they were feeling too much. Like it, it kind of helps alter the way you, you feel. And that feels temporarily okay, even if it's causing physical harm. So everyone wants to feel better. That's totally legitimate, okay? So we acknowledge and recognize that you know, you really, on a deep level, want to be okay, okay? And the destructive behavior you were, or target behavior you were doing might have been the best way you could think of to feel a little bit better, okay? DBT, of course, is offering other skills to help you feel better, but, you know, we understand that the behavior came about because it was an adaptation for you. It was something that, in some degree, is helpful. So acknowledging that out of fairness makes a lot of sense, okay? So in the both end dialectical sense, it made you feel better and at the same time, it's holding you back in other ways, right? So acknowledging both sides in a dialectical way is super important. Okay, on the other hand, coping skills. A lot of times we're talking about coping skills in DBT. There's a million coping skills that we're always offering, okay? Um, so we're obviously pushing the pros of coping skills. What are the good parts about coping skills? Well, they help you get through a situation perhaps feel a little bit better, um, deal with the distress without falling apart. You know, there's all different benefits of coping skills that a lot of people kind of know, at least on an intellectual level. You can't feel it in your heart yet, okay? But on some level, you know, coping skills are good. That's why you're here, I hope, right? Okay, however, there's cons of coping skills, right? For example, maybe they take a little long to work. Maybe they don't feel as gratifying in some sense as the target behaviors that you had. Okay, makes sense. Um, maybe it's hard to change. It's hard to do something new. It's hard to take the risk of doing a coping skill that you're not sure is really gonna work for you, knowing that you may not really feel that much better right away. Okay, so we understand a, a fairness in a dialectical way that coping skills, you know, may not always be that appealing. Or maybe it takes too much effort and you're just not in the mood today. Okay, but it's important to, if you want to make a positive change, to focus on the pros of the coping skills and the cons of your target behaviors and really keep those fresh in your mind and make it meaningful, okay? Because it's easy in the moment to just throw it all out the window and say, screw it, I don't care, okay? We want to make it so that it's making sense to you, it's feeling important to you, and that you're willing to use it. Willingness is also really important in DBT, as you probably have heard before. Okay, so, oops, sorry. Um, so that's about it for this skill. Okay, I hope it works out. Best of luck in using it, and um, please share with us how it went. Okay, and if you need a different skill, feel free to use a different skill too. All right, bye guys.